Welcome to Mastering Solutions. This is another projectile motion problem, and they tell us that we have a soccer player who takes a free kick from 20 meters away from the goal. So we'll say right here, over to here, wherever the goal is, is 20 meters. And when it eventually hits the crossbar of the goal, it's 2.4 meters above the ground. So it's going to come up, and then it's going to come down, and then it's going to hit the crossbar of the goal right here. And this distance, of course, is 2.4 meters. So they want us to figure out what the speed of the ball was when it left his foot, so the initial velocity. I've drawn the initial velocity vector right here, and that's what we're trying to solve for. And they tell us that the angle that it hits it above the ground is 32 degrees above the horizontal. So how you want to approach this problem is we have to find some way to connect the x and the y components of this. We know that the time will be the exact same. So time is going to be the bridge for us to connect all of this and bring them together. So how we want to approach this is first, let's break up our x and y components of the initial velocity. So we know the x component is going to be adjacent. So the initial velocity in the x direction will be equal to the velocity or the hypotenuse. So the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle 32. So we'll just put the angle theta. The initial velocity in the y component is going to be equal to the initial velocity and it's opposite of the angle now, so it's going to be equal to the sine of the angle theta. That comes from Sokotoa. We've gone over this a lot, so it's hopefully review. So cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and then we multiplied both sides by hypotenuse, so adjacent is equal to h cosine of the angle theta. So this is the math that we did right here, and it's the same math for sine, only we have opposite over hypotenuse. So these are the two components of our x and y for the initial velocity. So looking only at the x component, we're going to look at the velocity formula. So the initial velocity in the x direction will be equal to the distance that it goes in the x over the time that it does. Like we talked about, time is going to be the connecting factor for both of them, because that'll be the same. So let's isolate time. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by t. So we'll have velocity times time, and then we'll divide the velocity back over. So the final equation will be equal to time is equal to the delta x over the initial velocity in the x direction. We just solved for this right here though, so let's bring this down. So time now will be equal to the delta x divided by the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle theta. So now we have time right here. Now that we have the x component of time solved, let's figure out the y. So delta y is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. This is coming from one of the kinematic equations. Normally you're probably used to it y final is equal to y initial plus vit plus one half at squared. I just subtracted over the y initial to create y final minus y initial or delta y. For this, we know the initial velocity in the y direction, so let's substitute this and bring that down here. So that is going to be delta y is equal to this right here. So the initial velocity times the sine of the angle theta, and that will be multiplied by time, which we solved for here, divided by initial velocity times the cosine of the angle theta, plus one half the acceleration times the time, which will plug in time again right here, so delta x over vi cosine of theta, and we'll square that. Let's simplify our equation a little bit. One way that we can do that is by carrying over the square to all of the values here, and the initial velocity will be gone. We have the initial velocity is the same for both, and this is essentially vi sine theta over one, so you can see how they'll simplify there. There's another thing that we can do with the sine theta 
when we multiply this over, it'll be sine theta times x over cosine theta. Tangent of the angle is also equal to sine times theta over cosine times theta. So we can substitute tangent in here as well. So when we rewrite this, we'll have delta y is equal to delta x times tangent of theta plus one half times the acceleration, and then we're gonna carry over the square, delta x squared over the initial velocity squared times cosine squared of theta. And now to simplify this a little bit, let's subtract both sides of the equation of delta x times the tangent of theta. So that will go away. So we have delta y minus delta x times the tangent of theta is equal to 1 half the acceleration times delta x squared divided by the initial velocity squared times cosine squared of theta. And now what we're trying to solve for, we need to keep that in mind, is the initial velocity. So we want to isolate this, so we'll multiply both sides of the equation by initial velocity squared. So we'll multiply all of this by initial velocity squared. And then before we rewrite it, let's divide both sides of the equation by this value. So delta y minus delta x tangent of theta. So what we're left with is the initial velocity squared is equal to 1 half of the acceleration times delta x squared divided by cosine squared theta times delta y minus delta x tangent of theta. I know this seems really confusing, but we're almost there. And we can simplify this a little bit better. 1 half on the top is essentially the same thing as 1 with 2 on the bottom. So I think it's a little bit easier to see it that way, so let's rewrite that. So vi squared is equal to acceleration times delta x squared. There's a assumed 1 right here, and that will be 2 times cosine squared theta, delta y minus delta x tangent of theta. And now the last thing we have to do is we have to isolate this. So we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. And to save time, I'm not going to rewrite it before we plug in the numbers because obviously we're just getting rid of the squared. So let's come up here and we'll plug in our values. So the initial velocity is equal to the square root of the acceleration. And if you remember, we're substituting into the y equation here. So acceleration, in this case, for the y direction is negative g. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we multiply that by the delta x, in this case is 20 meters. We'll square that. All of that will be divided by two times cosine squared of theta, which is 32 degrees. And then that will be multiplied by the delta y is 2.4 meters minus the delta x, so 20 meters tangent of 32. And then of course we'll take the square root of all of that. All right, so this is a lot to plug in our calculator. So we have the square root of negative 9.8 times 20 squared. And then this will be divided by we want two cosine 32 squared, and then that will be multiplied by 2.4 minus 20 times the tangent of 32 degrees. So that gives us 16.4, so we'll keep that at 16 for two significant figures meters per second. So it was a lot of substitution and a lot of simplification. But here's your final answer for the initial velocity is equal to 16 meters per second.